two characters that you'll meet in this scene are both sensory immersion artists. That means that they have a computer in their brain that records the physical sensations that they experience so they can lay them as a sensory track in holographic films. So that's what you feel when you go to a holographic film is what they've recorded. And they're about to start a, um, a enactment is what they call them. So they're going to start a recording. But um, there's a male and a female enactor for each uh, movie house. And these guys, Bryce and Elise, Elise is the main character, uh, are kind of exes in a mixed up, bad, complicated kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we go. Oh, they are out on a, it, it was kind of a landing strip, now it's kind of a dock. So it's an asphalt runway and it drops off on both sides of the swamp. This is the Shades of Venice, so they're on their way to Venice. Um, I turned to Bryce then. His cobalt eyes held mine. We stood alone in the perfect pocket of unreality, crisp black below us, hazy white all around us. I swallowed a sharp flash of nerves. How many years has it, had it been since we'd done an enactment together? Three years? Four years? Just how badly was I going to regret this in the morning? I saw something flash in those eyes. Pain, hunger, something wrong. I waited with him until it settled inside of him. Everyone might know everything in this business, but it didn't make it their business. We could at least feign privacy. But the boat was waiting. You or me, I asked finally. Your choice. You then. We retraced our steps to the door. Then I nodded him forward. Two steps, three, he was gone. Fog was a wonder and a secretive mystery, longing and an imposed blindness. Fog was madness, a primitive rising desperate fear. Everything, all of that, all at once, in one body. And that is what I would capture. At first I wandered out into the earthly clouds with a sway, floating my body forward, just capturing the otherworldly brush of the heavens across my skin, between my fingers, my toes. Beautiful. I did a turn, let my hair, hair flow out, then around me. As I settled, I shook the strands back from my face, savored the quiet anonymity, the freedom. Then I caught a glimpse of the flutter of blue rayon. Then I heard a near silent pad of bare feet against the asphalt. Then I caught the musky scent of sweat and subtle aftershave. That look in his eyes, the pain, the hunger, the something else, the something else. And all of a sudden, the mist transformed from shimmering organza anonymity to cold, almost angry need. My fists clenched at my sides. Startled, I felt something else flash in my own eyes. Then I, I felt that something else flash in my own eyes. Then I savored it. Fog was a madness, a primitive, rising, desperate fear. The hunt. I crouched forward, step after step after step. Bryce reappeared, released from the mist. I reached out and barely teased my fingers upward through the back of his thick, silky blonde hair. As he began to turn, I darted away, back into the veil of water. I heard the hush of his pivot, the long pause, then the turn back. I waited a beat. Slowly, I slipped up on him, snaked a hand over his shoulder and under the caress of his loose shirt. He looked down, reached for my hand. I snatched it back and fled. Tiny rock chips pressed almost to cutting into those sensitized feet of my flesh at my feet. The fog penetrated deep into my lungs. My mind was clear and electric. I crept forward again. Two steps, three, four. He wasn't there, but I got myself turned around in the mist. I froze, all too aware of the steep drop from the runway into the swamp below. Then suddenly he had me. He caught me from behind, running his big hands up over me, then down, spreading my legs so that I straddled his thigh. I gasped, cried out. He pinned me against him with his right arm, using his left to pull my head to the side. His breath beat short and fast against my pulse. The threat transformed me into a frenzy of fear and need. I twisted and jerked and broke free and ran. The fog and the dark path led to nowhere off the edge of the world. He tackled me. We lifted free of the earth and hit hard. He rolled me, pressed my hands above my head into the biting surface of the path. Cut! Sam Tamsin shouted. The driver says he can't wait anymore. Bryce didn't move. He stared down at me, his eyes still wild, his breath still ragged. 
My own eyes were wilder still. I strained towards him. He pressed his cheek to mine. His voice sounded wrong as he whispered in my ear. Careful, Elise. You have to be careful here. Confusion and reality slowly drew back the veil as our teams began to materialize around us. I stared, at him, stared up at him as he lifted his head and nearly fell back into the frenzy I still saw on that face. Then abruptly Bryce jumped to his feet. He offered me a hand up. I hesitated, unable to follow the quick transition. He reached out and took my hand. I swept Deirdre's skirt to the side and pushed myself to standing. Together, yet separately, we limped over to jo Joanna and Ryan. They were seating the cameras in their cases. Joanna looked up with a grin. I'm going to need a cold shower after that one. Brian and I exchanged a silent look. Bryce and I avoided looking at each other at all. <laughs>